viewers. This video is going to be aimed at someone named Antonio to help him figure out um, how to use subtitles properly and what's actually going on. It, it took me a minute to figure out that he was downloading a external subtitle in the .srt extension but then using the option to connect to a temporary subtitle by uploading that to his server just like you would go out and look for a match at open subtitles instead of simply naming the subtitle and putting it with his movie so it, so it would be available to himself and all his users. Two different features of, of Plex with subtitles. One is on-demand subtitles which allows the client app to go out and look for a subtitle. It's a temporary connection even though Plex will remember it for that user. Plex will remember that connection. But it does not add that subtitle to your server, it just makes the connection. The other one is actual physical subtitles on your server called local subtitles. And they can be in either the embedded or internal form, which is inside the container file, inside the MP4, or inside the MKV file or they can be external and they can come in different formats. The .srt format is compatible across all player apps and do not cause a transcode versus a vsub or a vosub. Um, if you see the extension .sub or in the extension .idx, that's a vosub subtitle and they will cause a transcode depending on the client app. So anyway, let's get into it. I have a movie I'm going to add to my server and we'll show what it looks like without subtitles. We'll show what it looks like to connect to a temporary subtitle even though it will be permanent for that user. And then we'll show how easy it is to add the subtitle to the actual server. So let me do just a little bit of prepping. Let me copy these and then I'll I'm going to use FileBot, and I've done previous videos on that before, to rename the subtitles and the movie. But first, I forgot I've got a prep. I've got two subtitles, and FileBot won't know them from each other, besides that they're both English. Well, this one's bigger. The, the 4-English is a bigger file, which tells me it's the hearing impaired. So you can check that with a text editor and look for things in parentheses. That would be your hearing impaired, where the default subtitle won't have any of that. And if you have three subtitle files, with one of them small, very tiny, that would indicate that that would be the forced subtitle for foreign language parts, with the largest one of the three being the SDH, or hearing impaired subtitle, and the next slightly smaller one being the default. So to prep it for FileBot, I simply have to give a, an extension flag, which will be SDH. It would be .force.sdh or SRT if it was the force subtitle, and you can just leave the, the default one alone. If I had a Spanish or a German or a French subtitle or a Portuguese or a Chinese, all I'd have to do is check to see which it was by opening it up. Well, I don't even have to do that. They can just be here and FileBot will automatically discover the language and add the language code, which would be .eng .srt or .eng .sdh .srt. Now, if you're doing it manually, you can use the two-letter code, which would be .en for English, but FileBot uses the three-letter code. So let me open this up in FileBot. Let's see if it opens on this screen or my other screen. Had to move it over. So I've got other FileBot videos, but I'm using custom expressions. Now you can simply click rename. I'm sorry, you can simply click match and then go down and pick what you're matching to. So we're not in episode mode, we're going to be in movie mode, and we'll click on the movie database. And FileBot 
should handle this fine just without doing anything extra. Um, well, actually, it's not handling the subtitles properly, but my custom expression does. So we'll give you a brief input onto that. So this is just my custom expression. Um, the movie name, the year. I'm adding in the TMDB database ID. I'm also adding in descriptive information about the video and um, audio codecs used. And the, the last part, the SUBT, handles the subtitle. So, sorry, my mistake. By default, FileBot's not going to handle your subtitles. You've got to add that into a custom expression. Okay, so it took the plain English one and gave it the extension .eng, um, and it gave the hearing and period the .sdh, and the subtitles match the movie name with the extra file characteristics all formatted perfectly. So I'll hit rename, and a little trick, if you don't have a subtitle, and you, where do you click? Where do you click? Click on this, subtitles, Go create a free account at opensubtitles.net or .org. And they're both the same now. I prefer, I prefer the older interface for searching. Um, create a free account, connect to it, and you can download 200 subtitles a day and connect FileBot to it. So if you're back in your regular screen and click on the little tool icon and go down to Post Process, you can click fetch subtitle files and during the renaming process FileBot will connect to open subtitles and bring in a match. The match doesn't always sync so if you're grabbing movies from a release group that includes subtitles they're guaranteed to sync because they were ripped from the same master file the, the movie was. So anyway just a little bonus to FileBot. I can't help but talk about FileBot. All right, so I've got the copies of the subtitles. I'm going to need them, but in this directory, I've got everything I need to just add all this to my server, and Plex will scan in and display the subtitles all properly named. But we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna take the movie for the time being, paste it off screen into my server. Well, I apologize. I took the subtitle and not the movie, so let's paste the movie in. And you can see I was looking for a better copy of a certain movie that I was going to use, which is another public domain movie. Right, so the movie copied and you'll see that we'll have some activity in a second because I've got my server set up to automatically scan for new media and if we go to the home and drop down you'll see this movie was just added as a recently released movie so what Antonio is doing is he's clicking into none and he's choosing upload. I'm not sure if every client app supports that, so let's check that with a new HTPC Linux player client. Which I don't think I can use the mouse on. Okay, so if I go to movies, and go to this movie I just added. I can't get over to where the default subtitle would be to click in to choose upload. And if I go into more and select subtitle track, all I can do is search on the internet. And of course, there's options. And if I pick one of these, Plex will remember it across client devices that I've made that temporary connection. Now on my Android phone, I do have the option to click over where it says subtitles and it would show none, and then I get the upload 
option. So the upload option isn't universal across all client apps and we have to remember it's still not bringing that, that subtitle to your server for other users to use. So here I can upload it, choose a file, and Plex won't know which one this is, but I'll choose the default one. So now you're seeing it shown as an unknown SRT external subtitle, but it's still not physically on my server. It's, it's in Plex's database as a connection. So if I play this movie, let's see if YouTube gives me any trouble seeing it's a public domain movie. Let's see if we find a subtitle. Doi. If I felt as bad as you, I'd go and drown myself. So it is, it is working. But seeing that subtitles are so easy to name, so let's let's pretend the movie's name was in its most basic form. Let's copy that. Now I've got my movie named this way, but if you've got the movie named in the most basic form, the subtitle would be named like this. That'll work, but it will say unknown. If you add the dot ENG, now Plex will scan that in and know it's the English default subtitle. Now I can't add it like this to my server because my movie is named differently. This has to match how your movie's named. If you, you're naming things manually and jazzing it up a little bit, like that, both the subtitle and the movie have to be named the same, except for the final extension and extension flag. So the movie will be .mp4, .avi, .mkv, and no matter what that format the movie's in, the subtitle would be .eng, .srt, or an extra flag like, like .eng, .sdh, .srt. So the movie name has to match, so I cannot add this to my server as a local subtitle, but I can add these. So let me do that next. And again, we should see Plex take note of the changes. It's scanning automatically. And once it's done, let's back out of it. Go back in. And now once we did that, you'll see these two physical subtitles are available on the server for everyone to use. And again, I'm not sure if I mentioned it. If I had a forced subtitle for foreign language parts and the movie required it, this simple setting, go into the server settings and go down to language, language is, this simple subtitle mode setting changed to shown with foreign audio would load that by default. Let me, let me show you that. by searching for a movie. So I have this movie um, in three libraries. I don't do a lot with radar. I'm, I'm really just testing radar out. It works. I've got it set up the way I want it to. But the level I collect at through Usenet don't have external or internal subtitles included. And I'm trying to figure out how to get Bizarre to bring in every available subtitle I need, every available English subtitle I need, and I haven't been successful on that front, so I still collect my movies manually and not with radar. So let's go to the regular movie, not the 4K one. You'll see this loads up with the four subtitles already loaded, and this happens for my friends and family as it does for myself because of that server setting. So anyway, this is long enough. Um, this should straighten Antonio out. Um, well, actually, this last part hopefully will.
if that feature works on other movies and it has worked in the past and it's simply not working on the Northmen, it may be a bum subtitle. There may be a corruption to it. Try another subtitle. But you really should stop making those temporary connections to subtitles you've actually downloaded. If you've downloaded the subtitle, name it properly and put it on your server and never have to worry about it again. And you definitely want to do that for anything like the Northman that has forced subtitles. Change the one setting on your server and have them load up automatically and don't bother with it again. Thanks for watching.